Well, last week, the plight of white South African farmers was thrust back in the spotlight after it was made public that a family where the mother, Nikki, had been attacked and raped in front of her children and who, along with her husband, had sought a new life in Australia, had been rejected for resettlement here. Three days ago on Friday, another farmer was attacked, beaten to death with a pick handle. As I said a little earlier on, I wanted to discuss the reasons why these visas are being rejected when the government says it wants people willing to live and work in regional areas and there's no issue with Nikki and her family meeting the UN's test of a well-founded fear of persecution. But the man responsible, Minister for Immigration David Coleman, well, he was unavailable tonight. Thankfully for us, Nikki, the woman, the brave woman who survived this horrific attack, she is available. And she's going to speak to us now live on the phone from South Africa. Nikki, thank you very much for your time. I know this cannot at all be easy for you, but there are a lot of people in Australia who are very much behind you and they listened intently to the government uh, about 18 months ago who expressed concern and solidarity for what's happening to many farmers, farming families like yourself in South Africa. Why did you want to come to Australia and resettle here? Why Australia? Hi, Petra. Um, thank you so much for having me on air today. Um, we, we nev it never crossed our minds. Um, we obviously always knew that Australia was a beautiful country and, you know, that it was safe. And uh, we, it never crossed our minds until after we'd, we'd been attacked. And when we heard um, Peter Dutton at the time, you know, it's, uh, reaching out to South African farmers and saying that they were contemplating uh, introducing a humanitarian visa for South African farmers who'd been persecuted. Mm -hmm. it, it, we, we said, well, you know, we thought about it and we, we thought the way we can help our children have a future without the fear that they live with, without the... Uh, you know, the, the constant fear that something will happen to us again, uh, we then decided we would we would apply for the humanitarian visa. And, um, you know, I, I did the visa application and we had so many letters of support from friends, that, close friends we know living in Australia. Uh, I've got two cousins living in Australia. And we really, really thought that, you know, Having been honest and open about what happened to us, we would we would be given a chance. All right. Well, let's let's look at what happened. Uh, you were attacked in your home. You were raped in front of your children. Sadly, horrifically, for people watching at home, uh, this is not an isolated case. Uh, there have been two hundred and three farm attacks, this well, 204 we know of an attack where a man was killed on Friday night, but 204 farm attacks, including 23 murders in South Africa this year already. And we know when South Africans come to Australia, particularly those off the land, they live in regional areas. Uh, you, you build uh, enterprises, you open small businesses, you farm Australian land, you pay taxes pretty much as soon as you come here. Do you know why your visa was rejected, Nikki? We, we've got no idea. You know, it just says that you do not qualify as a, a candidate for a, a, the humanitarian visa. And having reviewed all the circumstances, we feel you do not qualify. That was the explanation we got. Um, and I think it's got to do with the fact that we... You know, our, our children are st still need to go to school. Our children still need to... Um, you can't go and sit in a refugee camp and put your life on hold. You'll have nothing left. You know, that's like giving up. Uh, so we didn't choose to do that. And I think maybe that that's the reason. So let me just jump in there because you, you were right in sense that was part of the report here in Australia... Um, that when you gave your interview to Australian authorities, that people we're told who took your evidence uh, were visibly moved uh, by what you had to say. We know that your attacker 
uh, has been given a total of 173 years in jail. Uh, the, the reporting here in Australia was such that uh, because your uh, rapist has been jailed, well, things are OK. But, of course, as you say, as many South Africans say, you jail one rapist, there's still the risk, there's still the fear, uh, and there's still further attacks on people on the land. And uh, because you're not sitting in a refugee camp, um, the case is made that you're not necessarily as deserving a as others. How is this going down in, in South Africa? Um, are there more people like you that want to come to Australia? How is this being received when we know from Peter Dutton's previous comments there was some glimmer of hope uh, there would be a way out for people in your circumstance? I, I think definitely. Uh, everybody here lives in fear. I don't think I don't think that people realise that, like even though I've moved to the city, uh, we live basically in compounds. We have every single house has electrified fencing. We have armed guards, uh, security companies which patrol and drive past our homes every half an hour. These are armed men to protect us. We we have state-of-the-art alarm system with beams in the garden. Just la last week, we had two um, armed intrusions in our area where I live. So it's not like we are safe. We, we also don't know whether they caught our attacker, but we don't know whether it was a planned thing. We don't know whether he was sent there, um, you know, and whether there'd be retaliation after the court case. So you you just don't know because a lot of a lot of the the talk is that maybe these attacks are politically motivated, maybe they're racial hatred. So we'll unfortunately never get to the bottom of why we were attacked. But it keeps happening. I I'd never ever known anybody personally who'd been attacked before we were. And I now I now have two uh, people who I know as friends, one of whom's father last week was was hacked, and he's 82 years old uh, in a rural in a rural town. And these attacks are just escalating. The the actual figures on Saturday were the attacks were 209 attacks. Um, so it's and I and I I have sort of heard I can't confirm, but I think there were three more last night. So it's, okay, it's Nikki, just, well, I'm going to uh, pursue this with the, the Immigration Minister. The man in charge is a bloke called David Coleman. Uh, he's a minister based in Sydney. He is the Immigration Minister. Uh, Peter Dutton is still around. He sits above that portfolio. But the minister in charge with the power to fix these issues is David Coleman. I will keep pursuing him. I tried to speak to him tonight. He was unavailable. I will not give up. Where to now for you? Will you seek to have this decision appealed? Oh, I... Oh. We would be so grateful to have it appealed. And, you know, it's not just, as I've said before, um, it's not just about us. I, I feel a moral obligation to follow through with this and make sure that we, as normal South African people, who, who we want peace, we want to live in peace, we want our children to be safe, you have a moral obligation to speak out. Just because I'm a victim doesn't mean that I can't try and make a difference for for all of us who are in the same boat. Um, and there's so many of us. People don't have hope. They don't know where, where to go. They don't know what the future holds. And you, do, you don't want... You can't live like that. No, you can't, Nikki. We will stay across this issue. Thank you very much for your time tonight. You're incredibly brave uh, to be talking about these issues. And, um, you know, more strength to you and your family. But as I said, we'll stay in touch and I'll keep doing my best to get hold of that minister. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you so much, Pietra. And thank you to all the Australian people for supporting us. We really, really appreciate it.